Now, I'm a computer person, not really a calculator person. As a matter of fact, I don't really like math altogether. But, well, this calculator here is really interesting to me. As a matter of fact, it's rather freaking big. This is a Monroe calculator. Um, the model, I don't remember. The year it was made, I don't remember. Besides, it was either the 50s or the 60s. Cost about eleven to $1,200 new. So that's about the price of your average car back then. But, well, look at it. It's huge. Let me give you some backstory on how I managed to get a hold of this calculator. Last month, I was down in California and I went through Sunnyvale because everybody says that Weird Stuff Warehouse is the holy grail of finding vintage computers and such. That was said about 10 years ago now. In those 10 years, a lot of things have changed. Um, gold and copper specifically have gotten a lot more expensive and collecting computers has become a lot more trendy to do. As a, lot, as a result, there isn't a lot at Weird Stuff which is really all that cool anymore. There's a lot of network gear and other junk, but you're not going to make your bargains there anymore. However, the as is section still has a couple of cool things. And this was one of the items in particular I found buried under a pile of selector typewriters. This Monroe calculator cost me 10 bucks. It was filthy, it didn't work, and it was overall a mess. It took me an afternoon of careful work to tear it apart oil it, clean it, and get it back to a point where it was somewhat usable again. If there's accuracy involved, I'm not 100% sure yet, but there's no blown belt, so it hasn't, hasn't died on me yet. Anyways, like I said, it's, an, it's a mechanical calculator. You have a motor, you have an on-off switch, you have a load resistor, and that's about it for it when it comes to electronics inside of it. Every mechanical calculator I've seen up until now adds and subtracts. That's it, because most people didn't need to do much more than that. And this does it as well. Um, first off, each row of numbers here indicates a different set of a different digits, so ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, and so forth. And there is no decimal that's set here or in these counters up here. There's actually three separate counters, which is this long bar here, this one here, and the one that's in white over here. And for example, I'm going to put say 22, and I want to add that, or I want to add 40 to that, so four, and I'm gonna leave this blank to indicate a zero, that becomes 62. Every time so far that I've entered in some sort of function, it's given me a one, here and a one over here and it adds by one every time I've added an additional function. So I've done two different key presses now which was well 22 plus 40. Now I can subtract from that obviously so let's go and take away 55 and that becomes 7. And if I actually go beyond that it doesn't give me a cool negative number it'll actually go so I'll take away 8 it'll roll the whole thing back to 9s. So I'm just going to go back here and that puts me back to zero. Again, this is still counting. Now this has gone back to one. We'll talk about that later. Anyways, this is where things get real fun. It also multiplies. For me to multiply on this here, I'm going to say I have 128. And I'm just going to add that into the counter up here. And I want to multiply 128 by 64. So I go 6, 4, and I push enter multiplier. This adds 64 to this counter up here. Now I want to multiply 128 by 64. I push this button here called clear malt. And that becomes 4096. And I can confirm that with any calculator right now that that's correct. Um, now that I've done that, I can also divide. So it's 4,096, so 4, 0, uh, 9, 6, enter division, and that moves it over here, and I want to divide that by 32. So 3, 2, and then you push the divide button over here. And 
so now I'm being told a 5 over here and a 28 over here, and this is now all zero. Is that correct? I'll whip out another calculator and we will go 4096 divided by 32. That equals 128. So like I said, there's an accuracy problem because even if I add the five, that's 528. That's still very wrong. So I don't understand that. Now going back to saying I don't understand a lot. There's no manual I got with this unit, so there's a whole bunch of features I really don't know anything about. We're gonna start up here. I don't know what these do. They don't seem to hold numbers or anything. They're just, you can set one at a time, and this button here will always reset them. These buttons here move the carriage back and forth. It also seems to push down the minus button, but that works individually. We know what enter multiplier does. We know what addition does. We know what enter divided does. I don't know what this switch does. It just has an on and nothing. There's this one here, which is plus N, E, and a negative. And if I scroll that down, actually, whoops, there we go. Yeah, if I scroll it down, it'll turn this to off. I have another switch here, which goes N, R, or R. Maybe it means no rounding and rounding. I don't know. These three buttons here are particularly special. And I'm just gonna, there, that'll make my life easier. Um, like I said, this is all broken up into th three different counters. So if I wanna clear the upper one on the left, I push this and this has all become zero. I push this one here. This clears the lower one, though there's nothing in it already. And this one clears the keyboard. It also clears the multiplier up here. So now that I've pushed it, I push enter multiplier and it'll go back to zero. I don't know what transmult does. We know clear malt does something for multiplication, obviously. ACC malt, I don't know anything about. I think it's for the accumulator. I don't know which one of these is the accumulator. Neg malt, again, I don't know. We know what divide does. The stop button here is for divide functions. For example, if you divide by zero on this, it doesn't drastically just explode into a million pieces. It just counts this here over and over and over infinitely. You got to stop it somehow. You unplug it. It doesn't actually stop it. You push the stop. It run, finishes its cycle. It's done. This here I'm as, has something to do with division. It's DIVD align. So I'm assuming whenever I push this, it always brings it back over to there. So I'm assuming... Whoops, and if I put it down and do it, it wouldn't do that, but it seems to do it anyways. I don't know what's wrong there. These switches up here, lock and unlock, um, lock and unlock right protection per se, on each of the three counter, each of the three counters in here. Basically, if they're if it's down, and I push the clear, these numbers will not go away until I reset that. There's also, unfortunately, like I said, and as we saw there with the uh, incorrect output, there's still a couple of problems with the calculator still. These little rollers right here flip a little red screen behind a grid between each number here. From what I've looked at, what's supposed to happen is that when it's red, you can't push the buttons. But I can push them anyways, which isn't all that useful. So I don't know why that's not working. There's also this switch here. Whenever you enter something into the keyboard, it'll reset itself. It says auto keyboard clear. So I'm assuming if it's flipped, I enter in a number and then I enter in the function. For example, I add, it won't reset itself. It resets itself anyways, regardless of the mode I'm in. The last thing that's wrong with this calculator that I can immediately find is there should be a knob over here, which is where you can use to manually turn the drive shaft. I'm not entirely sure why it's there. I'm assuming it's to fix jams and whatnot, but I'm missing it. And well, I've yet to really run into a reason to actually need it. So this is my Monroe calculator. It's big. It's an incredible conversational piece. And 
if I could find the documentation to better tell me what everything on this calculator does, or better yet, how to make it so it's not giving me wrong numbers, um, I'd really like to look at it if I could. I can't find anything online.